preserved in the original language and the previous, previous scriptures, which no longer exist, versus alterations and contradictions and various versions of the books that are supposed to be from God, the messengers, between being righteous people, examples to be followed, worshippers of Allah, establishing a prayer, calling people to goodness and being the first to implement the goodness, or people, messengers getting drunk and, and uh, committing fornication and doing the most, you know, the most heinous of, of sins. That if, if it was attributed to a regular person, it would be very inappropriate, let alone a proper messenger of God. Furthermore, believing in the day of judgment as justice, justice and the scales being present, the good deeds and the bad deeds being weighed, the belief, and your good deeds being the criteria which is required for you to enter paradise and be protected from the fire, versus depending on the death of someone else, and living life according to your wishes, not knowing whether hell really is eternal or not, whether it is the body or not, all these differences. And finally, the degree, believing that everything is from God, nothing is by luck, or depending on luck and everything. And you know, lucky seven is so you all, you know, have twist your, you know, cross your fingers and you know, uh, different other statements that are used where people become dependent on the creation, attached to the creation, afraid of the creation, and distant from their Lord. So you make a choice that you think that when Allah, God, asks you on the day of judgment, which one was according to what I had put in your heart? Which one of these teachings was more harmonious with the natural disposition, you'll be able to answer God with a true statement. Don't lie to yourself, because lying to yourself today is going to entail disgrace and regret on the Day of Judgment. So anyone who's listening to this, or may listen to this in the future, I advise you to make the right decision. Again, if anything that I said was offensive, I did not intend to offend anyone, I was only quoting. And if you are quoting from the source of the people, then this is the ultimate justice. I'm not bringing things from my own mind, I'm bringing them from the sources. So there's no offense there. There's only quoting. If the person wants to be offended by their belief system, then they need to reconsider their belief system. supplication, then yes. But you have to know that there are two kinds of destinies. There, there is the ultimate one which is المحفوظ, the preserved tablet. Whatever is written with Allah, the first thing that Allah created was the pen. And He commanded the pen to write. The pen said, what shall I write? Oh my Lord, He said, write that which everything that will take place until the day of judgment. And that particular moment, the, the pen wrote everything that will happen, including this particular moment. Now, this is called the Allah al-Mahfud, the decree of Allah and the preserved tablet. There's another kind of decree, which is the one that may change according to the our own actions. Now, that which changes is always in harmony with whatever was with Allah first in the preserved tablet. For instance, the Prophet said, Verily, the servant of Allah will be deprived of the sustenance which was decreed for him because of a sin that he commits. Now, in, this, in the preserved tablet, Allah had decreed way before that you will not get the sustenance. Yet, in the lower one, in the decree among the heavens, it was decreed that you will get it depending on your action. Upon you committing the sin, you lost it, which is in accordance with what was with Allah. Allah says in the Quran, يَمْحُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُثْبِتُ وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases whatever He wishes and He confirms. And with Him is the mother of the book. So the mother of the book is the one that has the ultimate things that will happen. And the other ones, Allah says that He allows some of them to take place and He does not allow others. Among them is the dua. Invoking, invoking upon Allah. Invoking Allah, excuse me, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove a disease, an illness that has befallen upon you. With, with the dua, Allah may remove it. And the Prophet said, nothing, nothing returns decree except the dua. They continue to battle in the heavens. Neither this one will go down nor the other one go up, so it will prevent it from taking place. Something that may have befallen upon you. So this is to be understood in this text. Yes. 
the acts of worship and the supplication and the good things that we do will affect the decree. But whatever that result is, it is with the ultimate harmony with the preserved tablet, which is with Allah. And that was the first thing that was written before Allah created the heavens and the earth. Is that clear? Inshallah. So make more dua. Make dua, supplicate to Allah and ask Allah to forgive us all for our shortcomings. Yes, sir. Someone entered to the Islam. What is the reward for him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are two rewards. The first being all of his previous or her, all of her his or her previous sins are forgiven. Because Prophet said that Islam them from Islam erases everything that preceded it. Furthermore, they have double reward. Uh, because Allah mentioned that if it's, if it's among the people of the book, if it's a Jew or a Christian who became a Muslim, they will have double reward. Their belief in Jesus, which is and belief in some of the pillars of faith, to a certain extent, better than a total atheist. And their modification to their belief along with the acceptance of Muhammad وسلم, and the Quran and the proper belief in Allah. So they will get first all of their previous sins forgiven, second they will have double reward because of their uh, acquiring the new belief which is expected of them. And so this is encouraging to anyone who wishes to meet Allah to get this particular uh, discount or offer by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather than meeting Allah without belief and then being among those who are wretched and destroyed. Wallahu a'ala. And Allah knows best. Actually, uh, the one I know not sadaqa, keep in the kinship ties. The hadith says this. Let me just rephrase it. Whoever wishes for his wealth to be extended, to be increased, and his life to be extended, then let him keep his kinship ties. Yani keep close ties with your family members. Uh, as for whether the sadaqa increases someone's life, then I personally do not know of any evidence of that. It may be the case, I just don't know of it. Maybe we will look, look that up, inshallah, and give you an answer next time. Allahu a'lam. I don't recall uh, a particular hadith or an ayah which deals with that. If someone else has information, I don't understand. Re regardless, sadaqa is something that is, is highly recommended and it has many other virtues, uh, such as you getting. Uh, the reward multiplied up to 700 times and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the sadaqah from you and continue to raise it as one person who raises his cattle and then you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an abundance of reward because of some maybe minor charity that you paid in your life while you were in need uh, you know the sadaqah the Prophet said protect yourself from the fire even if it is with half a date which is an indication that paying charity will protect you from the fire uh, it will increase your reward. Prophet said, No wealth has ever been decreased because of charity. So don't think that when you pay charity, you're having less money. Actually, it will increase. Either Allah will put blessing in the current money left, or Allah will bring you other sources of income which you were not expecting, or at least that when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment with the multiple reward because of that minor amount of money you may have given. So many other virtues of sadaqah. Uh, Perhaps extend the extend the extension of someone's life maybe one of them, but I, I'm not sure about that. It's necessary for someone and it enters Islam, you can change the name. Is it it? It is not obligatory for a new Muslim to change his name unless his name contains has a, like a negative connotation. Yani someone's name is uh, uh, for example someone's name is War Harb. Assuming that he is a Arab, the Prophet ﷺ changed that particular name. Uh, or maybe a, a, a Christian, uh, you know, whose name was, was you know, the, uh, indicated that, like, for example, amongst some of the Arabs' names, Abdul Masih, the servant of the Messiah. You see what I'm saying? So if the name, the scholars say, if the name is evil in itself, maybe someone's name is Lucifer or Satan. Say, no, you got to change your name, man. Because nobody wants to call you Satan, you know, every time you're walking around. So, uh, yeah, if the name is evil, then the person must change his name. But that is yani, rare. Predominantly, the person's name is, is, is okay. Unless it is, it is someone who's honest.